the 1920s, the young man from the tiny crossroads of Cherry Grove, Minnesota, decided to build and fly his own airplane. It had been less than 20 years since the Wright brothers first flew. Few people in the world had actually seen an airplane, never mind flying their own. But a man named Bernard Petenpol set out to do just that. World War I had seen tremendous advances in aviation. War surplus airplanes were cheap and plentiful. And at one point, Petenpol acquired a Curtis Jenny, the military trainer made of wood, fabric, wires, and lots of fussy metal fittings. The Jenny's 90 horsepower engine was notoriously cantankerous and the big biplane's 44-foot wings were much too long for a rural Minnesota barn. The persistent and ingenious Petenpole, who hadn't yet learned to fly, tried building some airplanes to the designs of others. His endeavors taught him a lot, but the resulting airplanes were too much like the Jenny, complex and inefficient. So, Petenpole turned to his own design criteria simple, light, and cheap. With help from his father-in-law, a woodworker by trade, Bernard developed his own light, practical airframe, and he built it. Powered with a used aircraft engine made by the Ace Engine Company, the little airplane performed so well that Pete and Paul and a pilot friend, Don Finke, flew it 50 hours between September 1st and Thanksgiving Day of 1928. It was in this little single-place airplane that Pete and Paul first soloed and developed his early flying skills. After one particularly hard landing, the ace job was dismantled and another idea developed. By the time Pete and Paul had acquired his limited flying experience, Charles Lindbergh had completed his 3,600-mile Atlantic crossing, and Henry Ford had introduced his new Model A car. When Bernard and his friend Don Finke went to see the new Ford, they paid particular attention to its engine's performance specifications. Mass-produced and inexpensive, the new Ford had power and torque well suited to Pete and Paul's airplane needs. Pete and Paul didn't have the money to buy a new Ford motor, but Don's father owned a sawmill. The two young flyers convinced the mill owner to pay for enough new parts to build a motor and promised that if it wouldn't fly their airplane, it could be used to power his sawmill. The Ford engine was heavy, but Pete and Paul stripped it of much of its unwanted weight, and with some design improvements in mind, set about building not one, but two of his new two-place airplanes. In May of 1929, they flew the first one, 626, and the following month, the second, 899H. Pete and Paul's design was the first practical airplane that could be built by anyone handy with basic tools. It was christened the Air Camper by the editors of Modern Mechanics and Inventions magazine when they published its plans. Just like Pete and Paul did in the 1920s, backyard builders today fabricate wood, metal, and fabric to build and fly simple, light, and cheap airplanes. Mr. Petenpole died in 1984, but scores of his air campers fly today. They are tributes to the persistence, the ideas, and ideals of a little-known rural genius, Bernard H. Petenpole.